So a week or two ago, Lawrence, who's both a viewer of the channel and an owner of Amuse Titan, uh, brought up this question about why full spectrum laser, particularly retina in grade three, supports both power and current, whereas m most lasers that particularly use light burn uh, will only support power and there is no current that you have to set. And uh, I thought, what a great opportunity to do a video. So uh, we'll put together a little test and we'll see what happens here. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to my workshop. And as I mentioned, this question came up about Retina Engrave 3 and, and why that software provides both a field for power and one for current. And it, it's a particularly interesting question for me with an engineering background because I always understood power to be the product of voltage and current. So if I change the current, that means the power is going to change as well. And vice versa, if I change the power, the current has to change. So it's really difficult to understand why they would support both. And the way to kind of get around this and kind of come to some terms with it is to build a test and that's what we'll do here and then we'll understand what the output looks like and uh, we'll draw some conclusions. So let's get going. All right, as always, when uh, we want to test something, we create a just a, a test sample that we can control uh, specific parameters on. And in this case, I created a grid that is uh, 10, 10 squares across and 10 squares down. And uh, each row in this case is a different current or will be a different current. And each column is, is a power. Uh, and we go from 10 to 100% in both directions. And what will happen here, if you look over on the side, uh, you can see that uh, the speed is constant for all of these. The first two here, by the way, are the text and the outline, so we won't worry about those. But starting with the yellow one and ending with the blue one down here, the speed I've just chosen arbitrarily is 100% here, and that's because I'm trying to keep it constant. And 100% is just kind of a good number for uh, for the kind of weakest uh, image to the, to the strongest image, which will be 100 and 100 down here. And uh, the other thing you can see is, again, starting with the yellow, it, in this case, you can see every row down here, every color is a different power, and that reflects the columns here across the, across the top. So yellow is always 10%, and you know, red is 50%, and so on. And now, you'll notice in the third column, which is the... Uh, percent current. In this case, they're all 10%. And that's because what I'm going to do is if I collapse all of these rows, and you can see there's, I created in this project, which I'll share, uh, I created just groups for each row. And in this case, you can see if I select 100, all the squares in the 100 row are selected. Uh, and it contains, you can expand these and you can select individual things, but we don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, going to engrave on this 10 different times. So we're going to first, the first pass is going to be the power and the output and this first row and this first row is going to be with a current of 10%. And what I'll do is I'll turn off all the other rows. And the reason I'm doing this is this is, you know, and I, I hate to beat on the FSL guys because they're always so nice to me, but, uh, this is a pretty big limitation in in Retina Engrave 3 because I can't, what, what I'd really like to do is I'd, I'd really like to say select, select this first row and regardless of what, what the settings say over here, I'd like to say for this group, make the power or make the current rather 10%. And then for the next one, do the same thing and say regardless again of, of the parameters that are set, for current, make the current 20% and then allow uh, settings by group, by group. So really, it shouldn't really be that hard. I'm not sure why FSL hasn't done it. If they have and you're an FSL uh, you know, viewer and I know some of you are out there, uh, if I'm completely crazy here, uh, by all means, leave a comment. I'm happy to be wrong in this case because it's, uh, th this is kind of a painful way to have to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'll turn off all the, all the other rows and I'll do the 10% one. And without moving anything in the laser, I'll turn on row two and I'll change all of these to 20%. Uh, 
uh, for starting with yellow down to blue and do it again and so on down to 100%. So I'm really going to make 10 passes on this piece of material. And it is kind of painful, but it's doable. Uh, it's just, it's so much easier on, on light burn. Uh, if you're familiar with light burn, you will, you will be incensed by the fact that I have to do it this way. But it is what it is. And it is kind of a corner case. It's not something you do very often, but it would be nice if they supported it. Anyway, I'll, I'll do all of these, uh, starting with the 10% one, and uh, we'll see what the output looks like. So let me get, let me get this, this engraved, and uh, I'll show you what we got. All right, so laser work is done. Let's take a look at the output here. So I have my 10 by 10 grid and a couple of immediate observations. I was kind of expecting a, a fairly straight line from one corner to the other this way. And as you can see, it's more of an arc. So kind of an arc from there down to, down to here. And that kind of surprises me. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that on the, with 10% current, the first six squares on the on the on the line don't actually draw, and that's because there isn't enough energy there for the laser to fire. Uh, whereas on the vertical, where we only have 10% power, adding current to it uh, definitely fires earlier. It's only the first two squares that are missing, and what that's really suggesting to me is that. Uh, that power equation I mentioned in the introduction might actually apply here. So even though we're kind of tweaking the power, it's not really until we adjust the current high enough. And that really suggests that power really means voltage. It doesn't mean power power. Um, so the voltage has to be high enough to, to fire. We have to get to that triggering voltage. But uh, once we add current uh, in there, we can, we can fire a little sooner. And you can see that here, there's only two squares missing on the vertical. So anyway, a couple of things there that, that kind of came out of this. The other thing to notice is as we get further down here, particularly on the current side, you can see that this, this kind of smoke trail on the side, it gets darker, a lot darker as we, as we move down. Whereas on the bottom where we're going, where we're adding power, it doesn't get as, it doesn't change as quite as much. You don't see quite as much smoke on this side. So that kind of suggests that if you want to, if you are having this kind of smoke impact on your material and you want to reduce it, certainly you can mask it, but uh, you could also just try reducing the current a little bit. So in this case, if we get down to 100% current, you can see, in the power curve, we can we can reduce that current and we can get to points where we get just about as dark the whole way across here. It's just that in here there's less less smoke around the perimeter. So think about that. Uh, so that's kind of the lesson here. Anyway, this is the output. You can certainly build one of these yourself. You can build this for any material, and uh, you know and. and build up this grid so that you can kind of get an immediate view of what power and current settings will give you the best expected output. Um, one other last observation here is you'll notice there's a couple of squares here where, where there's this line across the middle. These, rec these squares that I created are actually uh, made up of lines. I'm using vector infill here. So 
there's actually half millimeter lines that make this up. And in this case, the engraving is actually pretty, pretty deep. So it's deep enough that, that the remaining slice of material that wasn't cut out is actually thin enough that it, it's fragile and it breaks. Whereas you can see a little further over with just a little less power or a little less current, it doesn't do that. So again, keep that in mind uh, when you're setting your power. So yeah, that's, that's the output and uh, we can uh, carry on. We have a little better understanding for power versus current here. So there you have it. We built a little test here and uh, you can certainly see as the power and current both approach 100%, the engraving gets darker. Uh, what you really can't see on video is that it also gets deeper and when it gets deeper, uh, you'll notice in the, in the result video, part of the video here, that there's also a lot more dirt on the surface of the material. Now, interestingly, if you, you leave the power at 100% and start reducing the current, so in the, in the sample, it is that last vertical column, uh, you'll see that the intensity of the engraving doesn't actually change all that much for a while, up to maybe 60% but the amount of dirt and certainly the depth of that engraving uh, reduces. So there's definitely an impact with current. Uh, at the same time, you can leave the power at 100% on that last column and you'll notice that, that you know, the surface is cleaner. So don't assume that 100% power and 100% current is the answer to everything, I guess is the message here. Uh, so build one of these, these little tests. I'll actually put this, this Retina Engrave 3 project uh, uh, online and you can download it and just load it into Retina Engrave 3 and give this a try. Uh, there is a bit of tedium uh, because Retina Engrave 3 doesn't support uh, selecting groups and then giving them a single attribute, like a single row in my test. I had to actually turn all the other rows off to do the engraving. And, uh, you know, FSL, if you're listening and you're looking for a new feature, it would be really nice if I could, if I could group, uh, say, a row of, of these objects together and say for all of these, regardless of what the setting individually is, the, the current is constant or the, the power is constant or some other parameter. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier. Uh, this is something that uh, it's really easy to do in Lightburn and uh, it would be nice if, if Retin and Grade 3 supported this as well. So anyway, with that, we'll wind this down. As always, I'll put a video up in the corner here. Uh, go watch that if you're interested and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.